Hey guys, this is Pete Collins, and I'm one of the Photoshop guys here at Kelby Media Group. And today I want to share with you a little tip on how to use sharpening in Lightroom. Now the first thing I get asked a lot of times is what's the difference between clarity and sharpening? And the easy answer is to say clarity is really kind of doing a similar function to one specific area. It's boosting the mid-tone contrast. If I take clarity and I start to go negative, it's a little easier to see. It's kind of smearing all the mid-tone colors together. Whereas if I start swinging it the other way, it starts giving them a lot of extra contrast. Now that's great for textures like these buildings and the leaves and stuff like that. The problem is when you start adding clarity to people, it starts to give them a grungy look. That's okay if that's what you're going for, but when you're trying to do a picture, say, of a wedding or whatever, you want the bride especially to look nice and crisp and not grungy. So first thing I say is for if you're doing a portrait or something like this, you don't want to crank up your clarity too much. Give it a little bit, a little bit of bump, but we're going to go over to our detail panel because this is where we're going to do our sharpening. The next thing that I run into is people tend to and I'm one of them. I get lazy when I'm working on pictures and I tend to leave it at this view because I want to see what's going on. But that's a big downfall when you're doing sharpening is because you're not seeing the intricate details and seeing if the sharpening is being applied correctly. I'm just going to tap on his nose with a zoom tool and I have a confession. This is a picture of my sister and her husband that I took at their wedding and so if I zoomed in on her at 100% she would probably come kill me, so I'm going to go for the husband. And now we've got this zoomed in. We can see everything going on. I'm going to make some adjustments here. The first adjustment we have is amount, and that makes a lot of sense. How much of the sharpening is going to happen? But I tell you what, there's not much difference between 0 and 150, and that is because right now we've only said, let's do sharpening on a very small radius on a very fine scale, a fine line. There's not much going on. We haven't given a lot of room to work. That's where radius comes in. Radius says, okay, you can expand out from there and influence things half a pixel, one whole pixel. The bigger you get it, the more impact it's going to have. So you can see a difference between here and here. It's showing a more impact of the sharpness because we've added a greater radius. Now detail says, okay, not only do you expand how much influence you're going to have, but how sensitive or how precise you're going to be. You're going to look for all the little nooks and crannies and add those details. And so it's really, as you start moving the detail, it starts to get extra crunchy, extra funky is what happens. And so you've got to realize that these all need to interplay with each other. How, how far out do you go, how big a radius, and how much detail. Now the good news is you've got this last adjustment here which is masking. And what masking does is it applies a smoothing or it doesn't apply as much sharpening to areas that have a consistent tone value. Things like sky, these areas of skin, even right over here. Let's watch right now I have no masking on but pay attention to this area and like the cheeks as I start to move the masking over it starts to smooth those areas out and it pretty much wipes those out so that the only thing that's getting sharpened are going to be these areas here. And as a matter of fact, those are the only areas that I really want a lot of sharpening to. Now when you look at this, if you can see it full scale like this, you're going to notice that we still got some crunchiness, a little extra stuff going on in the eyes and the mouth and around here. And that's okay. The reason why is you're going to be displaying this picture either on the web and so you're never going to see it this big you're at the most you're going to see it about this size and you can't see any of those things it's just got more pop to it now than it did but you're not going to have to be so uptight about how sharp it is and if there's a little extra sharpness around the eyes and the nose all you'll know is it has a good pop to it when it's on the screen secondly if you're going to be printing this even on a large picture when it gets printed these little areas here are going to smooth out because of the printing process so one of the tips I like to add is that you don't have to get too gun shy about adding sharpness because you can take that sharpness up a little bit too far where you think it's too much 
back it off just a little bit, but leave it a little more sharp than you think you feel comfortable with because when it's processed, when it's printed, it's going to look better than you think. Okay, so now I've got this picture and I've sharpened it up pretty good. The problem is I've added all that sharpness to my sister as well. What I would tend to do in a situation like this, instead of applying a global sharpening, I would bring this down. I may apply a little bit of it just to give the whole picture a bit of a sharpen. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to my adjustment brush and I'm going to do a local sharpness. By first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in so we can see this. Get my brush. I'm going to apply a sharpness and I'm just going to do it in certain areas. Just like before, I only want it make the eyes have a little bit more crispness to it, crispness to the lips and around here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sharpen up the groom because a guy likes to have a rugged kind of a little bit more gritty look and I'm not applying that sharpness to the bride who needs to be a little softer. So that's my takeaway from this. Understanding what the sharpening area and the detail panel will do, what the different levels are, sharpen a little more than you think and also maybe think about if you're doing a portrait or you're going to have to deal with an image where you have both a guy and a girl you might want to think about going with a localized sharpening with your adjustment brush and set your sharpness up for what you want to what you want to do once again i'm pete collins one of the photoshop guys here at kelby media group and i hope this helps you with a greater understanding of how you can use lightroom